Hello, Dave and Tim here for the single malt review. We've gone back into independent bottler territory with one of the old favourites, Caden Heads. Mm. And um, old to the tune of 175 uh, mm. this year. So happy birthday, Caden Heads. Grand, grand mm. old company there. Um, this one sports the sports the tag there, but I think they might mm. just have stuck this on a bit um, mm. retrospectively because this is um, just their Cadenhead creation. Yes, not an independent bottle link once. We used to Cadenheads well, in their spectacular yeah. independent bottles. It's, but it's not an independent bottle, no. but it has been bottled independently. Mm. Um, what this is, is a Cadenheads blended Scotch whiskey, mm. so grain and malt going on here, not a blended malt, um, that they have teed up in-house from their own groaning stock of casks and they have put this together mm. um, which is kind of interesting it's i guess you'd call it an independently bottled blend which is something that i don't say blended i don't say <laughs> too often um so yeah blended blended from molten grain and married for some undisclosed period oh. in butts for uh, okay. a for a wee while, just to let the malt mm. and the grain, I guess, get to know each other a wee bit before yes. it was. So this is the I'm the you know, batch number eight, eighteen year old light creamy vanilla mm. came its creation. And the strength is what is it? It's forty four point six. And that's yeah. a bit of a that's a bit curly to me. This is a curiosity. To, yeah, mm. to to take cake and head at their word, they Bottle at 46% or natural cask strength. Mm. This not being 46%, like to take them, to give them benefit of the doubt, we'll have to assume that this was the actual mm. cask strength once you know once everything was blended together. 44.6 seems very low for yeah, an 18 year old. Would it imply a lot of very that. heavy top dressing? Well, I could. It mm. could. They could have used really, really old whiskey in here and mm. simply a little bit of 18. Because I've had um, maybe 40-year-old whiskey, which is right down yeah, around the 45% that's, mark. It's really, really low. Mm. Or they just had a few like real, real critical leakers in there somewhere. <laughs> um, maybe a lot of the... Um, a lot of the grain volume mm. was in like overactive casks or just casks with a few um, you know letting a bit of air in more than they should and so they kind of panic bottled this one in and <laughs> so the strength is like i really have no idea yeah. but it's certainly a um, it's certainly a bit of a weird thing if mm. that's genuinely genuinely the natural strength so not color anyway. not chill filtered yeah not, no no color no heads. chill filtration as you would um, really just sort of mm. hope to see off the bat now from anything caden heads produces it's one of the things you can rely on these days mm. which is very very good and um, oh, as blends go well the whiskey in this blend was all distilled in 1998 so we can mm. assume no mm. top dressing well so there we go there we go is, yeah after 18 years it has lost that much alcohol Tis a mystery the angels yeah. were particularly greedy in that mm. warehouse i suppose and they have chosen to call it light creamy vanilla, mm. um, which is, I suppose, fairly descriptive yeah, because that's, that's very much what it's going for. The tasting and nosing notes on a bottle harken heavily to what you'd expect mm. from bourbon to to summarise. Yeah, this is kind of a bourbon Vanilla, ensemble. sugar on the nose, uh, satsuma mandarin peel, milk chocolate, strawberries on the palate, and a finish of butterscotch fruit vanilla icing. So we'll see if our experience matches up to that. Mm. Um, yeah, it, it's mm. bourbon, bourbon both coming and going, really, which is not a bad thing. I mean, if it's going to be bourbon, mm. it might as well be bourbon the whole the whole way through. It's a very sweet nose, sort of yeah. like a almost sharply sweet, like sherbet. It is sweet, and as they say, quite creamy. Mm. There is a slightly lifted prickle to there, not unlike sherbet, as mm. you say, now that you've mentioned it. Uh, the mandarins, I don't get particularly. I think they pop those on yeah. the palate. Ah, well, knows, maybe, so. they're, maybe they're still waiting. Mm. But yeah, very, very sweet, very, very soft. Aside from that, just tiny little bit of zesty yeah. sherbetiness. There's, I've got to say, that's a, a brilliant yeah. colour and crystal clear. It's neither coloured nor chill filtered, mm. obviously, but it yeah, looks, it's, yeah, it's very fetching. Really I think we'll see a bit of opacity once we put the water in mm. there with, the, with their lack of chill filtration. So yeah, that makes the nose. It's not mm. a... It's not a complex whiskey, both nose or palate, because I mean I've had plenty of this already. Um, it's quite a not to call it one note, but it's fairly. It does it does what it says on the label, I mm. guess you'd say. So let's see what's on the palate. Hmm. There is a generous amount of grain spirit there. 
It is mm. also very quite a tang, a sharply citrus tang. Better be, as I say, very, very, very satsumas. So obviously mandarins. I'm getting a little bit of grapefruit as well. Mm. There's, mm. It's um, fairly nice and soft, easy drinking at only 44%. Oh. Um, the, the, mm. I mean, it, it will certainly take water, but it's not going to blow your head off at that mm. strength. So very, very approachable. And really, it follows through on the nose, but introduces just a little bit more on the palate, which is good, because I think the nose was maybe just a little bit simplistic mm. in terms of stuff stuff going on versus stuff that wasn't. Um, the, there is a bit of... I still don't get any strawberries here, but maybe my strawberry detection is, is not strong um, today particularly. There is a little bit of citrus coming in now. Um, mm. I wouldn't know a satsuma mandarin from a different sort of mandarin. It might just be an nomenclature yeah. thing. The English call them satsumas, we uh, call them mandarins. Uh, who knows? Uh, just probably for avoidance of mm. uh, confusion. But no, after several sips, there's a little bit of some creaminess and some more mm. subdued fruits, some I, I fruit, including a, strawberries, emerging over time. Yeah, there's a lot of butteriness, creaminess yeah. on the palate. Although that said, there's flavours of these things, but in terms of the feel of it, mm. it's not a particularly buttery or oily feel. It doesn't It doesn't have the mouthfeel of a Klein leash or something like oh, that. It's quite, something terribly it's oily. It's light and silky for me. This is mm. a. I like the mouthfeel. It's not creamy, but it's very smooth. There's there's flavors. So silky flavors of butterscotch and cream and things like that. Mm. But it's quite. Um, it's fairly fresh as it goes yeah. down. It's a little bit of a strawberry freon is how I'd describe it. It's putting me in mind slightly like a more restrained version of Weems strawberry cream. I think Again, I missed out on that one. Oh, yeah. Okay, oh, it was a good one. Cream. It's a yeah one of Weems is novel again a blend um an was that their um blend? ben nevis derived hmm one maybe who knows we can look it up but yeah. um with water you get um a mm. uh, slight slight opacity developing i don't think i put a great deal in no. mind but uh what i what i get out of this is i really get a little bit more grain than i do hmm. malt which isn't necessarily a bad thing that just means this is more of an unabashed blend than yeah. you normally maybe expect from a, a caden heads or something like that but that's um it blends the world over all the all the blends that you know and and or love um typically have um, more than half grain whiskey. So I suppose this is just more faithful to blended whiskey than maybe I was expecting. But I think the, the, the dominant flavours are coming from the grain rather than the malt there. That has mellowed out the nose and let some more sugars come mm. to the fore, some like brown sugar, a little bit of ice and sugar. I think that benefits from that wee bit of water there. Not a, not a great deal of it, but mm. just enough yeah. to... Um, bring it apart a little bit. Um, there's still not not a fantastic amount mm. of things going on. Some bananas, mangoes, and toasted almond mm. emerging on a palate now, having added that water. Yeah, I think it's a it's a very sort of it's a fairly pleasing whiskey. Yeah. And it's not without its Moorish qualities. Mm. You know, I'm happily happily just sort of sit and sit and drink this, and I'd be mm. perfectly okay. Um, it's not a not a real thinking whiskey though. Um, it's Maybe I mean I, I knew I was getting a blend, so maybe it's my fault. But it's more it's more blendy than mm. I was expecting. I don't know what I was expecting. I've never tried this one before. The only other um, sort of independent things I mean I, I usually get Blue Hanger whenever it comes mm. out. Although I haven't recently. That said, they've become a little hard to get in New Zealand. Um, that of course is a blended malt, and maybe I was expecting something a bit more like uh. that. But no, this one I think is a very very true blend. Hmm. And it's a very, very good blend, um, so long as you're thinking about it the right way. And as we score it, we should remember we are we are giving it a blend score. Yeah. We don't want to accidentally lapse into, into the malt um, hmm. just because it's a uh, Caden Heads bottle. But what, what do you think on it scores-wise? I haven't quite Ooh. formulated. It hasn't quite coalesced in my brain just at the moment. Scores-wise, look at how I'm enjoying this, the flavours it's delivering. It rates a... Not staggering, but a solid 80 from me. Mm. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm going with it. Um, I'll give it a, a smidge more. It's an 81 from me. Mm. It's not it's not lighting my fire necessarily, but it's um, a perfectly pleasant mm. blend. I just think it's, um, yeah, I don't know, maybe just a little bit reductive. Um, I, I think there could be a little more excitement to be mm. found. Um, excuse me, there's a cat. <laughs> It must must be seen. There you go. Feed the internet, Sybil. Feed it. Feed it with your very existence. And now go away. There we are. There we are. 
So, um, tick cat. Um, yeah, I think that's probably all there is to be said about it. It's a difficult one to recommend to anyone individually unless yeah. you're some sort of blend freak, uh, which I think there's the likelihood of any blend heads, if there is such a thing, hmm. um, frequenting this channel is quite low. So this one is probably a bit of a niche thing. I'd say Caden heads have done better independent modellings of single yeah. malts. There are better blends available from the likes of, say, Compass Box. This is still a, it's a good blend from an, a superb independent bottler. I'd say probably the, 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 the footnote on this one mm. is maybe just playing a bit too safe. Yeah. Um, it's something that's a little bit too reductively normal mm. at the end of the day. Solid, solid, mm. but normal. It's aiming for a safe middle ground. It's hit it firmly. But on the downside, it means it doesn't get to stand out in any particular area. Yeah, certainly not the one I would have put the um, 175th anniversary mm. sticker on that. But I believe I think they just threw these on everything coming out this year um, to uh, to to imply such. But mm. at any rate, um, that's about the best we can do with uh, what are they calling it? Cadenhead's Creations mm. Light Creamy Vanilla. Um, if that sounds like it's up your alley, then mm. um, by all means take a dip. Um, it won't set you back a great deal. Yeah, that was an 18 year old blend from an excellent independent mm. modeler. Not something you can try all the time. No, indeed. At any rate, this has been the Single Malt Review. You can try us again um, pretty shortly because we'll have something else in the pipe really soon. Sanjay. Sanjay.